Good evening, digital heroes, and welcome to tonight's performance of ISA Digital. My name is Arabella Fenivesh, and I'm delighted to introduce renowned Austrian pianist Alfred Brendel. Alfred Brendel will be joining us from London tonight, and he'll talk about a composer very dear to his heart. Alfred Brendel may very well be your own musical hero. His concert career took him around the world for many years and was crowned by countless recordings and prizes, amongst them the appointment to a Knight Commander of the British Empire. Alfred Brendel was the first person to record Beethoven's piano works in their entirety. That's big. Apart from being a celebrated pianist, Alfred Brendel is also a devoted essayist. He has been very active as a writer in recent years and gives lectures and public readings frequently. Tonight, Alfred Brendel will be talking about Franz Schubert's string quartet in G major. He will analyze it in detail and give musical examples for what he is saying. Some of the thoughts contained here are themes he has written about before you may want to do some follow-up reading. Check out his collected essays in the book Alfred Brendel on Music. Following Alfred Brendel's analysis, you will hear a live performance of Schubert's G major quartet by the Simply Quartet. Digital heroes, meet your hero, Alfred Brendel. Schubert's String Quartet in G Major. Schubert composed string quartets already at a youthful age. He wrote them for domestic use, but also enlisted quartet writing to express orchestral ideas. He used to play as a violinist in the orchestra of the Imperial Boarding School in Vienna, and his compositions show a proclivity towards orchestral writing that would also include many of his piano works, most strikingly the Wanderer Fantasy. Within the quartets, the orchestra is hinted at through passages played in unison, double stops and tremolo. Beethoven and Schubert's late quartets face each other well nigh independently, although they were composed side by side within a span of three years, while the two composers lived in the same city without close contact. These works by both composers look far into the future. It seems to me that only the 20th century would build on their audacity, while the quartets by Mendelssohn, Schumann and Brahms remained in a kind of parenthesis. In contrast to Beethoven, the architect, I have called Schubert a sleepwalker. Permit me to explain this. There is a sentence by Goethe after they had met in Teplitz, which admirably summarizes his personal impression of Beethoven. More concentrated, energetic and affectionate. I have never seen an artist. These qualities give a clue to his music as well. Next to Beethoven's concentration, Schubert appears as a musician who lets himself be transported just a hair's breadth from the abyss, not so much mastering life as being at its mercy. His somnambulist style of working is borne out by the fact that in a life of less than 32 years, he was able to produce nearly a thousand works. 
which is not to say that he worked uncritically. Nevertheless, in regard to Schubert, I feel closer to the Kantian view that the creator of a product of genius doesn't know himself how his ideas are generated and that to generate them at will is beyond his powers. Schubert may be the most immediately moving among composers, but we should avoid the fallacy that in Schubert everything is a matter of feeling. There is such a thing as an autonomous musical intelligence. But there is also the ability of consciously planning novel forms like those of the Wanderer fantasy or the fantasy for four hands in F minor. The composition of Schubert's three great quartets in A minor, D minor and G major had obviously been stimulated by the return of the violinist Ignaz Schupanzig after years of living abroad. Schupanzig and his string quartet that was sponsored by Count Razumovsky had been the leading performance of Beethoven before the Palais Razumovsky burned down. Whereas Schubert's early quartets were accessible to amateurs, Schupanzig with his professional players and his own series of subscription concerts offered the possibility of placing demands on the musicians that went above the domestic level. Schubert was a subscriber to this concert series. The A minor quartet, the first of the late string quartets, is dedicated to Schupanzig, who premiered it in 1823. For the subsequent quartet, The Death and the Maiden, he had no use. As late as in 1850, the Viennese Helmesberger Quartet gave the first performance of Schubert's G major quartet. In the following year, it finally appeared in print. Movements of a macabre character Veritable dances of death are a Schubert hallmark. We find them in the D minor quartet as well as in two of the piano sonatas. The G major finale is eerie in a somewhat different way. The movement is actually in the major but constantly attacked by the minor, for instance by a piercingly accented minor note in the initial theme. Has there ever been another composer who related so immediately to major and minor? More often than not, minor seems to represent here the world's reality, while major suggests a yearning for happiness, or even the sweet comfort of death. Already the very beginning of the G major quartet confronts us with the rivalry of major and minor. The conflict remains one of the most glaring features of the work. At the beginning of the recapitulation, we experience it differently. First minor, then major.
The energy of the movement start is turned into pianissimo. The theme sounds as if it had aged. The musicologist Walter Frisch called this change one of the most radical in all music. At the movement's end, the battle between major and minor is just barely won by major. We can see Schubert as lyricist, epic poet and dramatist. The latter far more persuasively in his instrumental music than in opera or singspiel. I would now like to add the Expressionist, in the slow movement of the G major quartet, as well as in the Andantino of the great A major piano sonata, conscience becomes shattered. The music is seized by fever. In the outcry of the notes G and B, both of these notes remain unchanged no matter whether the harmonies change. Schubert has written down the duration of the higher of these two notes very precisely. They are not staccato notes. Another characteristic feature of the G major quartet is the use of tone repetitions and tremolos. They are a token of inner unrest that can lead to delirium. The composer Dieter Schnabel even talks about the secret material of the entire work. It would appear as if Schubert wanted to demonstrate the multitude of things that can be done with repeated notes. Tremolos, for example, have the capacity of electrifying and galvanizing chords as in the double theme of the first movement. On the other hand, tone repetitions of a thematic and motivic kind are to be heard in the third and fourth movement. Listen to the beginning of the scherzo. Here it's every single note that counts. The marking of the first movement, Allegro Molto Moderato, refers to the tempo and not the character. In this movement, extreme intellectual and emotional tensions counterbalance each other. It starts with a strongly contrasting double theme. The first juxtaposes major and minor. The second is a kind of premonition of Bruckner. Here is the first. Later, a third dancing theme is added that leads to a whole series of varied repetitions. Karl Dahlhaus speaks of a sonata form approaching a cycle of variations. The development begins with tremolos of the cello that move in harmonic no man's land. We 
within the descent of this bass line, we can notice the whole tone scale providing its principal notes, a striking novelty. Contrary to Schubert's habit, hardly anything is repeated verbatim in the recapitulation. Even his performance markings are varied and legato and staccato modified where themes and their variations are reintroduced. In the second movement, Andante on poco moto, the cello has wonderful things to convey. Its basic character is lyrical, while the feverish episodes are full of menace. What happens in the last four bars reaches out of utter hopelessness into a kind of unexpected redemption. It affects us like a miracle providing that the first violin is willing to make it happen. Then there is a spectral scherzo with the most loving and affecting lullaby as its trio. The finale, Allegro Assai, is a dance of death, of grotesque and sinister gaiety. It contains a phantom of a melody in C-sharp minor that appears in pianissimo, reminding me of the fact that Beethoven as well sometimes introduces passages that seem to come out of the blue, providing glimpses into another sphere. In his fourth piano concerto, there are three of these glimpses. Before the finale's conclusion, there is a startling intensification that is constantly widening as treble and bass move away from each other in contrary motion. of the G major quartet has been recognized only belatedly. Josef Joachim, the supreme violinist, said in 1860 that he loved individual sections but found the work as an entity immoderate and without feeling for beauty in its contrasts. Today we listen to Beethoven's and Schubert's quartets with different ears, seeming boundlessness set new boundaries. <laughs> Thank you, Alfred Brendel, for those insights on Schubert's G major quartet. If you want to further explore those trains of thoughts, you might look into his collected essays Alfred Brendel on music. Let's see all of that now in action with an ensemble of young heroes. Performing for you live is a quartet that has started to make a name for itself internationally, the Simply Quartet. As members of the ECMA, European Chamber Music Academy, they have personally worked with Alfred Brendel before. The Simply Quartet was founded in Shanghai in 2008. Original members, violinist Dan Feng Shen and viola player Xiang Lu, were joined more recently by Norwegian cellist Ivan Valentin Holop Rold and Austrian violinist Antonia Rankersberger. 
They are currently studying here at the MDV with Professor Johannes Meisel, and have performed at the big concert halls in Vienna, as well as the Wigmore Hall in London and the Rachmaninoff Hall in Moscow, to name but a few. They have been awarded several prizes and love to explore new music as well as traditional repertoire. So here they are now performing for you Schubert's G major string quartet. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Simply Quartet.
Thank you. 